so I've got a really fun Tuesday tutorial for you guys today. I just recently shared with you guys my Love Notions game day jersey where I added a lot of these really fun ruffle details on the sleeve and the hem. And I mentioned in that pattern review video that I did all the ruffles for this dress on my serger. So I'm gonna show you um, how to set up your serger. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to get it set up and show you a couple ways to add ruffles to your garment using a serger. Let's get to it. Okay, so obviously we are at my serger. It is the Brother 1034D model. A lot of you guys probably have this. It's pretty basic, pretty inexpensive. Um, this is the side panel, and this is where we're gonna start making our adjustments. So the first one you have way over here, this is called the differential feed. And basically what a differential feed does is there are two sets of feed dogs on your serger, one in the back and one in the front. And the differential feed determines how fast the one in the back and the one in the front move in conjunction with each other. And the higher the number, when you crank it all the way up to the top, the back differential feed basically does hardly any work at all. And the front differential feed pushes the fabric through. So if nothing's happening in the back and the fabric is getting pushed through, then it's gonna create a ruffle. Um, the next one you have here is how wide your stitches are into the seam allowance. So this is for me kind of more of an aesthetic thing. Um, I ended up leaving mine on the normal setting, but if you want them wider, if you want this width here from the edge of the fabric to the innermost edge of the serger stitches, if you want that area to be wider, this is what you are going to adjust. And this here is gonna make the stitches in between longer or shorter. So it makes this area tighter or looser. So I pinged mine up two clicks. Um, but again, that's a little bit of a personal preference. All you really need in order for the ruffles to work is to move the differential feet. All the rest of this stuff is just sort of uh, personal preference and um, just how you want your ruffles to end up looking in the end. Especially if, like on my dress, the serger stitches are visible on the sleeve. So it was important to me that this looked really good. Okay, from here, we are gonna start adjusting the tension on the threads. And again, in order for it to make ruffles, we need for the, this needle and this needle to be really tight, the tension to be really taut in order for the, when the lower loopers, when the, um, sorry, the feed dogs are doing their thing, we need those threads to be really, really tight to hold that together. So this gets pinged all the way up. You can do it all the way up to nine. I preferred mine at eight. And this too, the, this what's happening here is also based on the fabric you're using. So I'm using a lightweight Ponte. This here, all the changes we're gonna make here are things that you are gonna want to test on your fabric before you um, actually sew the real deal, which is why I have so many of these like little things here because I was practicing the tension and making sure I could get everything right. But for this Ponte fabric, it was an eight and you're gonna want it to be either eight or nine or somewhere in that range. So this one here is gonna be nine, eight, seven, somewhere again in that higher range. It worked better for me to have these two at different numbers, but I've seen others uh, examples where they were both set at nine, the highest that they would go. So again, you're gonna have to play around with that depending on your fabric. And then these two here, just like whenever you're surging not ruffles and you're just surging a seam allowance, you need these two to be balanced. And what that means is you really want the upper looper thread to be right on the tip tip top edge of your uh, raw edge. And then you want these guys here to be nice and snug holding that in. You don't want these to be hanging off the edge too, too much. So I am going to um, just run this through the machine just so you can like get an idea of what it's like to surge something like this. Um, it's a little bit 
weird, but also fun. Um, so I am going to take some seam allowance off just because I want a nice clean cut. All right, there we go. We made a beautiful little ruffle and you can see that everything is nice and balanced and the ruffle looks nice and cute. Not too much, not too little. It's like a perfect little ruffle. So for me on this Ponte fabric, I have it at eight, seven, six, five. And then on the side here, I have my differential feed all the way up. And then this one on the stitch length, I have it at something like five and a half. It's like five plus two little ch -ch <laughs> on the knob. Um, okay, so now we're gonna talk about how, like different ways to apply this to your projects. Okay, so I've showed you how to make the ruffle on your serger. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways to apply it to your garment. One is to basically like applique it and to take that ruffle and stitch it right on top of your garment, which is what I have done here. You can see that the seam allowances are on the outside of the garment. They are not sewn in and or inside a seam. And I've just basically top stitched all the way around. Let's see if I can show you this. Um, there you go. I've top stitched all the way around to hold both of those ruffles in place. And this is how that ends up looking like. Obviously you could um, uh, match your thread to your ruffle, which was something that I considered, but because I had the color blocking thing going on and I already had the top stitching in the contrast color, I decided to leave it contrast. But if you matched, you would hardly see those stitches at all. Okay, and then for the hem, which looks like this, I actually did sew the ruffles into a seam. So basically I made the ruffles just like I showed you guys. The settings for this thicker type of Ponte were very similar to the other Ponte I used just for reference. Okay, so when I did that, then I turned the, oh, and to get the length. Okay, this is gonna be a question that a lot of you guys are gonna have. How do I know how long to make my ruffle for my garment. And when I did this, again, I did some testing and I think, again, you're gonna have to test each and every fabric that you wanna do this to, but I took a 10 inch strip of fabric, I zipped it through the serger on the ruffle setting and then I remeasured and it was almost exactly five. So it's almost exactly a two to one ratio. But I was still a little bit leery as to, how accurate that was. So a lot of times when you're sewing garments that call for a ruffle band, the ruffle part is really just one big rectangle and then you pull that in to make it, you know, it's kind of tapered ruffle shape. So I took my eight inch ruffle and I just cut it the width of the fabric and I made an entire one long ruffle, that entire width of the fabric, and then I sewed it onto uh, my dress, right sides together, sewing it right in, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see because I have it top stitched, but sewing you know, just a quarter inch seam allowance so that it's catching right at the edge of the serger stitches, but still catching the dress, then I took it back to my cutting table, cut off whatever excess was there from the ruffle piece. And then I ran that through the serger with a regular, just to get a straight serger bra edge clean finish. And then I finished stitching it to the garment. I also wanna say that there is a ruffle foot that comes with sergers. It ruffles the fabric and serges it to the straight flat fabric at the same time. And that would make, um, the only difference that would make is that on the inside of the garment, um, where the, this is the dress here, this seam allowance here is raw. It is not surged, it is not finished in any way, which was okay for this fabric because it was a knit. But if I were working with a woven, I might not necessarily want that. So you either have to run this through your serger, flat, no ruffle, all on its own, and then sew the ruffle to it. So you have two separate surged um, 
seam allowances or raw edges or you need to figure out this ruffle foot thing. But I did think that this was a really, really neat and easy way to get ruffles made for like little accent pieces and for a hem. So hopefully all of that makes sense and it'll inspire you. Like, don't be afraid of your surgery. I've had so many of you say, I've had one forever, it's still in the box, I don't know what to do. It's not gonna bite you. Like, it's not going to injure you, well, it actually can injure you, but it, it, if you're if you're doing it safely, it won't. Put on some goggles if you're really worried. Protect your hands. Um, but you know, get some scrap fabric out and just start playing around. Go through your uh, manual and see all the different things that it has to offer. Hopefully, you'll be sewing lots of ruffles. They're very on trend this year. They were in all almost all of the big four patterns that we did the first impression video on so there's lots of ruffles to be had and i will be doing this trick a lot more so if you need it shown in more detail just let me know that and i'm happy to do a full-on you know overhead tutorial this was really just showing everyone the settings on the machine and kind of how it looks but that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.